Hi, okay, so this is the third video and this is gonna be the last video on sectioning trusses. And so what I wanna illustrate here are a couple of things that is useful when we're sectioning. And the primary idea here is that you can use more than one section, okay? Because every component is in static equilibrium, and so some of the horizontals, some of the verticals, some of the mom moments are all equal to zero for every part of the thing. You can slice this and dice this thing any way you want to that's going to make the algebra easier for you to manage to get at what you want. So here we've got something that looks like a, a giant, I don't know, one of those high tension uh, poles or structures that carries electricity across the country or whatever. Um, and it's got a couple of loads on the edges there, um, 100, uh, 1200 and 1600. And what we're asked to do is to find the force in DC, HI and JI. Okay. And um, so what your book has suggested, and, and it's a good idea in this case, is to do this thing in two steps. And so we use two cuts to do that. All right. Now, I've already gone ahead and found the reaction forces at A and B for you. Um, and I did that simply by putting my uh, pivot at A. And then I summed the moments and uh, popped out B. And then from B, I got A. Okay, so super straightforward. You've done it a hundred times at this point, and I'm sure you're getting really good at that. Okay, so the first cut to look at really is is going to be this guy. Okay, now it might be okay to, to do the other cut first. Um, I didn't, but uh, I'm just going to show you how, how I went about it. And when you do that, Okay, what you end up with is a top piece that looks like this. Okay, top piece that looks like this. And um, so we're going to have to have something here, something here. Okay, and then little, oops, little internal bits here and here. Okay, <clears throat> now we can be really confident um, although at this point, maybe not 100% certain um, that those two upward forces need to be upward forces. Um, and they're not like switched or down. They certainly both can't be down. I mean, it, it could be possible one's up and one's down, but it's it's a reasonably good guess at this, this point that they're both up, okay? Um, and so let's go ahead and um, put a pivot right here. Okay. Now, if we work through this um, by looking at the moments, what you're going to see is that this side is 1900. Okay. And that's actually um, identical. It's the identical situation to how we ended up with this uh, getting the 900 and the 1900 there to begin with, okay? And it's kind of like, oh, right. So, I mean, from a certain perspective, it's like this whole thing is just something that's got the 1200, the 1600, the 900, and the 1900, okay? And no matter what happens to it, how tall it is or how squished it is, we, we still have the same situation there, okay? So it's kind of like, oh, right. Okay, well, that, that makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, so that guy's going to be 1,900, and this guy's going to be 900, okay? And again, they're pointing toward the pin, so that means it's pushing on either end like this, and that can only happen when it's in compression. Okay, so it's pushing the ob the member is pushing back because it's in compression. Okay, all right. Now where I've got my pivot still the yellow dot there, um, that that doesn't help us in terms of trying to figure out 
what's going on um, with uh, these two lateral forces. Okay, that doesn't help us at all. Uh, if we look at what's going on with the vertical aspect of the forces, that doesn't help us get at those. If we look at the horizontal, that doesn't. Get, all we learn by thinking about the horizontal stuff is whatever's pushing to the left, it's got to be pushing to the right. Okay. Now, it happens, though, that that particular component, those two components that are connected right there, where I've got the green highlighting, we actually don't care about what's happening to those. So it's not worth our time to, you know, dig down and try to figure out what's going on with that. Okay. Um, they could have a thousand pounds of force on them. They could have zero. We, you know, we don't know. We don't care. Okay. The other piece we need is that diagonal J I. And so I've outlined the component or the section that's left. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on this guy just a little bit here. Okay, so that's that. That's the bottom half almost of the tower from our second cut. Okay. Um, and what we've learned is we're going to have 1900 here in this piece and 900 here and this piece. Okay. What we don't know is what's going on here and what's going on here. Okay. Now, actually, I want to go back <clears throat> and make those a slightly different color so I can talk about blue and red. And that's just going to be a little bit easier. So the blue ones there, I don't know if they're in tension or compression. In order for the thing to be in equilibrium, it's pretty clear they're going to have to be opposite, okay? Um, because I've got vertical equilibrium right now, so I can't I can't disturb that. And so that means if if this one is up, then this one's going to have to be down, okay? Okay, well that's going to give me vertical equilibrium, but look. Now, if I think about horizontally, uh, I've got a net force to the right, okay? And that's not cool, so that's that isn't going to work. Um, what if what if I switch it around? Yeah, okay, well, that didn't help either. I, I, again, you know i've I've added no net vertical effect, but I've added a net horizontal effect, oops, sorry, this way in the image um, to the left. Okay. And um, so that's not good either. So it's like, ah, what are we going to do? Okay. All right. Well, one solution is there's no force at all in those members. Okay. So let, let's, let's think about this from one more perspective to see if the idea that they're actually zero could make sense because they're not classic there, there's no classic situation where we can for sure look at it and go, yeah, that's a zero force member. Okay. So, you know, we get that sometimes if we've got a beam here and another beam here, and then if we've got a third beam that comes in, we know this third beam isn't going to do anything. Okay. So that's a classic zero force member. We don't have that <clears throat> in our structure. So can we be sure that one of those blue lines or both is zero. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to put a pivot right here. Okay, at least this is the way I'm going to do it. Okay, now if I put a pivot there, then that means I'm only going to get a moment contribution from this blue, this red, and the red down here. Okay, all the remaining forces uh, their line of action goes right through my pivot, and so that we get no moment out of those at all. <clears throat> of what we have left, the the 1900 down and the 1900 up both cancel each other out. So the only way I'm going to get zero moments is if, in fact, this guy is also zero. Okay, and if it's zero, then that means the other one is also zero. All right, so 
this kind of thing can happen once in a while. If you if you're doing your analysis and you get a component that seems to be a zero and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. OK, <clears throat> you've got options. You've got ways to verify that. And you just, you know, just look at one of your other equations. You, OK, and um, see if zero makes sense. And oftentimes, like what we have here, you're going to have a situation where the only solution that makes sense is for it to be zero. OK, and so then you're just kind of like, OK, <clears throat> great. All right. Now let's take a look here. And let's think about that thing being zero one more time. OK. The this 1600 over over here on this side. OK. That means this guy's got to be pushing here, which means we're pushing into here on this. OK. And so this guy's got to be here. Here. OK. And on the other side, we've got something similar here here, 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 okay. Now we already know this guy's in compression and this guy's in compression. And so the only way that things are going to work out, say at point D is if we've got this over here, this, and that means we got here and here, just like that. Okay. Um, down here at the bottom, we we'll start to look at these things. We're going to have this and this. OK. Um, what what could be happening here? Well, that's that's hard to say, except we're going to have one of these situations where because of K, if it's up here, it's going to have to be down here. But that creates a net force this way. And that and that doesn't make any sense. OK. Um, and so all of these here have to be zero. And then that makes this one and this one actual zero force members. OK, in the classic sense. All right. So there's yet another way to kind of go through and think about, does my zero answer make any sense? OK, because um, usually you guys have enough experience, you know, that if you get zero, uh, you probably screwed something up. Yeah, probably screwed something up. But, but not necessarily. So if you do get zero, it could be the right answer. Just um, take a little bit of extra time and make sure that it, that it makes sense that it should be zero. Okay, there we go.